Hello, everyone that's um, joining us remotely. I apologize for our delay. Uh, we had trouble getting started with the technological difficulties with our executive session, but we are back. And um, I'm going to begin by reviewing the agenda. Um, we will try hard for those that are joining us um, that have come to you know make presentations. We'll try hard to uh, see if we can get you close to on time. Um, so um, welcome all. And tonight the uh, agenda is going to include community input. And then uh, the old home day committee um, is going to talk with us about their plans. Uh, we have Laurie Eckler coming as the chair of the Youth Commission, um, followed by uh, John Petron from Community Paradigm, and where we're going to talk about the uh, town administrator interviews that are scheduled for a week from Thursday. Uh, liaison assignments, um, a discussion about or an orientation for volunteer boards and committees and their chairs, annual appointments. The town administrators report, liaison reports, um, appointments and resignations, and finally a consent agenda with uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be close to our adjournment. We'll see how it goes. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, so if, uh, let's see, if you do want to offer um, community input, um, we should we should be able to hear you. You're not going to be able to see us, unfortunately. I think you're just seeing a frozen select board meeting okay but we are here and we will be listening so if anyone does want to offer input now if you could indicate that by um i suppose either raising your hand or going to the chat function and um letting us know yeah luke did you want do you want to uh, okay so if uh, there's nobody online um i don't see anyone uh, asking to um, have, have time to give some input. I'm going to recognize Luke Ascalillo, who's here in person, and invite you up to the, yeah, pull up a chair and you don't have to stand at the podium. You know, we'll give you a break. Yeah, yeah. anyway. And I'll turn the microphone back. On. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I, I just, uh, I, there's been a, a flurry of, uh, activity with the CPC thing, right? And, you know, I, I, I'm i not here to talk about the point. I don't care about that, right? But, um, you know, what's important is that, you know, with the last minute agenda change, you know, uh, there were a number of inaccuracies and, and issues that have kind of arisen, you know, from um, all what was said. So just so a couple of points of clarification. Uh, so the grants agreement was awarded to the housing trust. It, it, it was not awarded to uh, NOAA. It was, I, I made the motion on the floor at town meeting. You know, most of us were on the housing trust at that time. Um, so it was, you know, it was requested by the trust. We made the motion at town meeting and the, the grant agreement was prepared in, in accordance with the conditions that were set forward by the trust and voted on a town meeting. And this is, this is the important piece of all of this. It was voted on at town meeting, right? Yeah. So, and this is why we do these grant agreements. So, um, you know, read the mosquito article and talking with Betsy and seeing the the um, the last meeting. You know, a number of concerns. I mean, you know, Kate, you mentioned a lawsuit, a potential lawsuit. You mentioned a meeting with NOAA and numerous councils and the Board of Health, and ultimately to revise a grant agreement that CPC was not involved with. Right. So, so again, it's it's a CPC grant agreement that was voted on by town meeting that now the applicant and the person who is supposed to be overseeing the grant agreement is now edited, right? So this happened in January. We went all the way through a CPC grant review cycle. We went through a town meeting, right? So at the end of the day, if, if that was the necessary path, which it, it I don't think it was, um, then, you know, that's the path that should have been taken. Not, not this last minute change to try to push something through, you know, after I'm off, you know, so we can sign invoices, right? The, the important thing here is with CPC, we have these systems in place, we have, these processes in place so people can't skirt the system right and and i mean ultimately you know the the big concern is getting people paid you could do that with the grant agreement that we have in place now you know we don't need a revised one there's every grant agreement has a condition that we get a budget every grant agreement has a condition that you know there are certain pieces that need to be you know these things where that the system needs to be functional that it needs to meet the Board of Health requirements, right? It needs to be permitted. And then, you know, ultimately, 
you know, we're fine with giving as, as much of the disbursement as, as is needed, right? But what, <laughs> you know, what, what's going on here is that, you know, the, the grant agreement's getting rewritten. It's got conditions in it that CPC has never seen. I mean, I, I know you're trying to schedule a, a meeting for CPC to vote on it, right? But, but again, it was, these are conditions that were approved by town meeting, right? And, and in, in order to change something, I mean, if, if we allowed everybody to change anything that's voted on by town meeting. What needs to be changed? This is well, th this, is, this is where I'm confused, right? Because the grant agreement states that um, there are really three main conditions. It needs to be signed off by the Board of Health. It needs to be operational before, and, and maybe this is where the catch is, before funds are dispersed, right? And then, um, I forget what the, the third condition is, but, but, but essentially it's all what we had discussed at the House of Trustees, right? But every application where they don't have funds in advance, you know, Greeno Dam, uh, you know, we're seeing it now with the dog park, you know, they come to CPC and they say, you know, can we spend these funds? And yeah, you can spend them, right? But it's at your own risk, right? Because ultimately if the project fails, you know, the, the funds need to be paid back. And, and, and that's a condition that we have in everything, right? And the other piece too is the budget up front. And it, it you know, it was, it was a bit frustrating to see your quote in the mosquito about not providing a budget. I mean, we, we ask everybody to do it. And, and the reason is accountability. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't yeah, read this. Well, yeah, I, may, so, I may have been misquoted. Um, but but we, we need a budget because it's transparency and accountability, right? Because if we do another housing project in town, which hopefully we will do at some point, we need to know the full cost. If, you know, uh, same thing we, we asked the playground folks, budget, right? You know, if they drop 300 and some odd thousand dollars on the equipment and it never gets billed, <laughs> right? We need to be sure that they've got that 300,000 sitting there to pay us back. Right. So, so these are all things that it's to protect CPC. It's to protect the state and the and the taxpayer dollars that are in there. But it's also in there, you know, to, to protect the town because you know if somebody challenges and we don't have full visibility, we don't have full accountability, and the town loses a lawsuit, you're you're paying that the funds back, and you're paying for council fees. Right. So, so you know, I it's frustrating that you know all of this went forward when it really just could have been settled with. I mean, we sat next to each other at the at the table it just. Is there a grant agreement? Yes, you know, and I, you texted me when I was in the UK. I didn't have it in front of me. Um, you know, so it's, it, you know, part of it is last minute agenda change, right? You, you, know, you guys didn't have the facts. You guys moved forward with with a decision that, you know, could actually really negatively impact CPC moving forward because you know I, I had a conversation with Drew about it and 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 um, about the grant agreement for the dog park, right? And he said, well, wait a second. So if, if we can just change the grant agreement, what's the point? Exactly, right? You know, and and while most of it's town entities, you know, some stuff does go, we've given funds to FRS, we've given funds to CCF Play, we're given funds to the playground. I mean, we can't just have people changing grant agreements. You know, they think they need to be changed, right? It needs to be a process and it needs to get voted on the town meeting. So, you know, my, my ask is that, you know, well, one, I will, we'll get this whole thing sorted out because honestly, you know, had we just followed the process, we, we could have paid the contractors in January. We could have paid them in February. It doesn't matter. I mean, the funds are there. They can be paid, you know, but now what happened is <laughs> you voted me out, which again, I don't care, but they can be signed by the chair of the vice. Lord, just to correct, it wasn't we voted you out. The statute said you couldn't be on as the select board rep from the moment you went in select board. You had to okay, put that, in. Well, then then please get me off of Highland and the traffic safety as well. Um, I think those are but, yeah, well, I don't know. But um, but either way, you know, we had all the way through May. When did you get elected? Ninth, <laughs> right? So, I mean, the pro it could have been handled, right? And it could have yeah. been done, right? It doesn't need to be this last minute scramble, right? So, um, but now what's happened is, yeah, you know, there has to be a CPC meeting. Somebody has to get voted in his chair. Somebody has to get voted in his vice chair. And then ultimately, you know, the conditions of the grant should be met, but it, they probably won't be because we probably won't get a budget, right? But then ultimately, then somebody can sign off on on the invoices, right? But I guess <laughs> the the whole thing here is, you know, and it's one of the things that frustrated me on the board is last minute agenda changes, right? And when you don't have all the facts, you know, when when stuff comes in in scattered email. You know, you make poor decisions, and and ultimately this resulted in because I don't know when the next CPC meeting is scheduled, but I mean now another delay of a month when when things could have been signed months ago, right? So uh, that that's my point. Um, you know, please just yeah, when you move forward with these things, you know, have the facts. You know, because you asked actually at the end of the last meeting, you know, are these facts necessary? And they are, right? But they've got to be accurate. 
I'm not stuff. disputing that. So let me try to understand it. David, I just want to interrupt for a second. Sorry. Generally, with community input, I know. I know. Yeah. Luke, I'm no, I sorry. get it. No, and I get it. We don't yeah. typically no, interact on it, but um, I, I, I want to say that um, I, I really appreciate. I think all of us appreciate your coming and trying to address this directly. Um, and I think it's incumbent upon us as a select board a to, you know, take take the broader um, point. Uh, seriously, but also I think we we need to follow up to deal with this immediate situation, which it sounds like we didn't need to get ourselves into if there'd been a lot more sort of communication and, right. and preparation. So um, yeah. I appreciate you coming and um, we will definitely follow up. Okay. It's nice being on this side of the table. So <laughs> I'll turn that off. Okay, Luke. Um, let's see, do we have someone from the old home day committee? Uh, is that Niles um, there? Hi, Niles, I think I... We have Niles, Christy, and Mark Levitin here. Oh, great. Hi, Christy. Uh, I see Mark. Hello. And I'm sorry Hello. you can't see us, but uh, we are all here. Um, Nathan is uh, on online with you. Oh, he's, that's right. He's in the car on his way here. That's right. But Travis, myself, Barney Arnold, Kate, and uh, David are all here. So, um, and we have some information on our packet that you provided about old home day. So um, uh, why don't you share with us maybe some of the highlights and also what you would like from the select board tonight? Thanks. Well, I just wanted to let you know, uh, we have um, a great lineup again this year, some old favorites and some new events. Our theme this year is Carlisle through the decades, so that should be fun to see how people interpret that in their artwork, the cakes, and um, uh, you know other entries that they uh, art show entries that they may um, submit. We have submitted to you our lineup of events, the uh, flyer that we usually send out to people, and that we hand out on the day. Uh, old home day, which is June 25th this year. Uh, new to old home day, uh, which I'm going to let Mark Levitin speak to, and we're really excited about, is the Carlisle Music Festival, or which is on Sunday. Now we're going to have wonderful music throughout, scattered throughout old home day itself on Saturday, June 25th. But on Sunday, we're going to have um, just a music festival dedicated to the talented musicians in and around Carlisle. And I'm gonna let Mark um, say a few words about that. Certainly will. Um, so yes, the, um, the planning is, uh, you know, we're deep into this thing and we've got a lot of different musicians. The uh, qualifications for us to uh, invite musicians to play this weekend there's at least one group member had to be from Carlisle uh, in one case it's uh, a bookkeeper at FRS as somebody who works here but in all the other uh, 15 or 16 uh, artists who are going to be performing they uh, at least one if not several of the members reside here in Carlisle and the, the goal was to uh, give the music community a boost. Uh, COVID has been devastating for that group. Um, most of the folks are either professionals or semi-professionals who make a significant part of their income through music, uh, but there are also some amateurs. And, you know, this is a big undertaking. We've got a big tent coming in to Spalding on Sunday. Actually, we'll be there on Friday the 24th. We've coordinated with the RETCOM. Uh, we've coordinated, uh, and uh, Niles uh, will do his usual coordination. Uh, Niles and Christy will do the usual coordination with uh, DPW, the police, EMTs, etc. I won't uh, speak to that. Um, but I do uh, feel that we are going into some uh, interesting territory. We're, we will have a couple of food trucks on Sunday, uh, an ice cream truck, uh, and we're making it a family-friendly event. And one thing I, I just want to make sure everybody understands is this is not a rock show. This is a uh, show full of musical diversity. Uh, the first 
uh, act on Sunday is the Concord Women's Chorus with four Carlisle members, followed by a classical guitar and flute duo, followed by uh, an eighth grader who's a good uh, pop singer with his guitar. In other words, a solo act, followed by an Indian gentleman who just moved to town about six months ago who will accompany himself on guitar, followed by um, I believe it then is my trio, which only has one guitar and a harmonica. Um, and it isn't to say we don't have two uh, rock oriented acts. We have two out of the 11. Uh, and the rest, again, are singer songwriters, jazz trio, that type of thing. So the diversity was our aim. Uh, we've sort of uh, blueprinted this off of the Lowell Folk Festival, which offers a variety of music. And, and these. Uh, uh, um, uh, sessions, uh, what is, what's the problem with the wording here? Uh, the, the, uh, um, each, art, each art, uh, artist is going to have basically anywhere from 15 to 20 to maybe 30. And the, the biggest act is a vocal pop group that uh, has no instrumentation. Uh, they have, I think they get 40 minutes. So it's a, it's, it's really sort of a, glorified open mic style uh, program. Um, and we're not sure you know, what we're gonna get. We get some good feedback when people hear about it. Um, but I, I think it's gonna be a, a fun family day. Um, the Frisbees that we'll be giving out on Sunday, you can't see because of my screen thing, you know, customized <laughs> Frisbees for the day. We've been using the um, grant money that we've received, I think pretty efficiently. And we appreciate that. I'll certainly take questions too. That all sounds terrific. Um, do are there any uh, questions from board members? Just a comment that I'm. I think the horses are going to be very happy that you're not doing fireworks. Thank you. I'll thank you on their behalf. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know how many requests oh, we right. get for fireworks. No, the music festival is not going to upset horses or any other lives. Well, you don't know that. You don't know that, but uh, it's it's <laughs> unlikely. I do also don't want to give short shrift to Saturday. Uh, we will have three different venues going. We will have what we did last year uh, at the school plaza level above the country fair. We'll have mostly uh, vocal a cappella groups, including the uh, Carlisle Community Chorus sound bites and the concords um, interspersed with a couple of solo artists and then at the book swap on Gleason as long as there aren't any drops of rain and also at the uh, art and craft show at FRS with uh, unamplified music so you know we're going to try to spice up uh, as many parts of the of the old home day traditional program as we can it's it's you know I know the whole town is very excited to be um, having old home day back in full force with some new new additions as well. Um, I'm looking at the cover letter that you sent us, um, Christy, and so uh, it looks like we need a motion to um, uh, give you permission to use um, town center. Uh, I mean the the um, uh, the common, the town common, uh, we don't typically vote to approve the other, um, you know, areas that you're using, but the town common, and then also to give permission to hang a banner uh, there on the, at the school, turn onto school street. Um, am I right? And, and I guess to, um, right, just to in include the dates of the 25th and 26th, or is it 24, 25, 26? 26, oh. Right? It's, 24, 25, 26? It's actually the events themselves are on Saturday and Sunday, June 25th and 26th. Okay. And Friday, Friday, June, Friday yeah. June 24th is just preparation. We have early road race registration. Okay. For arts and crafts, we'll be there setting things up, but there's no events planned on Friday the 24th. Okay, so permission, so our, um, our motion should include the 25th and the 26th then. Um, and uh, just, um, I'm sure you're already doing this, but um, you're going to be in touch with, uh, or have been in touch with the police chief around the police 
coverage or support for us and then also FRS um, in terms of usage of their facilities? Correct. Yeah. Niles okay. has been coordinating uh, early on, especially with Chief Soros uh, and been in touch uh, with um, Chief Fisher as well. And the Arts and Crafts Show um, chairperson is Rebecca Fortier, one of our local artisans, and she has been in touch with the FRS regarding Union Hall. Great. And they and typically um, FRS also signs off on the use of the common. Um, but I'm assuming you've already they're they're I'm sure they're supportive. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a joint thing. Um, okay. you know, in previous events that we've had there, Barney, it's usually um, we have to get FRS and the town to right. jointly, you know, collaborate and, and give their blessings. So Okay. Good. And um just finally about Spalding Field, again, I'm trying to, we're trying to do better about making sure that we are checking in with the Recreation Commission, uh, given that they have their summer programs running now. Um, have you had any conversation with Holly Mansfield? Our I have been in touch with her all throughout. I mean, we Great. didn't do, we didn't order the tent till we had her on board. Um, and we've got people, you know, we've got the mowing scheduled to accommodate, we've got sprinkler flagging to accommodate so we don't puncture any lines with the tent. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I just, you know, uh, revisited this with her. When was I in town hall? Kate, it was uh, Friday. So everything's uh, A-OK -okay and all set. Uh, we Good. are having the tent uh, set up on Friday. She does have her program starting on Monday. So we're having the tent people come in late in the day to uh, not interfere with them. That's awesome. Great. I, I know you're always really well organized. So I, I, I'm just going through the, the due diligence part of this. <laughs> you bet. All right. Um, I have a question about the cakewalk yeah. at the town hall. Is that in, inside? Is the cakewalk going to be inside the town hall? Where is that? No, it's going to be outside. We'll be storing the cakes inside as we uh, have done in years past, but the cakewalk will be set up outside in town hall parking lot as oh. as we've done in the past oh okay so this is as done in the past. great okay. all right so um, um i just have one other question okay sure the banners you wanted banners across you know like they always do i understand but don't we usually need a date and don't we uh, because sometimes well, they've there's got it in here for in june the okay they've asked for it in june up through the old home day do you see the letter from right? I see but the it letter. doesn't say when do it they doesn't say when they want to put it up. That's what I'm asking. It's a June, the month of June, the whole month of June. While we're already in right. June, so it would be starting 14th. That's why I was, yeah, <laughs> okay. Go ahead and jump in. Yeah, just to um, let everybody know, um, and I appreciate the boards, you know, Barney, I appreciate your due diligence, and I appreciate you know the, the board asking these questions. Um, just to you know sort of refresh memories i believe you know when we sent the letter in back in january and february, february the board actually did have a meeting and i believe voted at that time to you know allow us to be able to do these things so no issues with the uh, follow-up on this but just wanted to make sure that you know folks knew that this wasn't uh, a last minute on our part but uh, you know i think this is you know we'll, we'll count it two is good for one you know, over <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Niles. I gosh, I I apologize for not uh, being more uh, on top of the fact that we'd already had this discussion. Yeah, yeah. I, and normally it's Jen that knows when the banners and whose banners are up, and right. you know, one has to be taken down and another one put up. So, 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 uh, well, why don't we consider this then? This is an update um, conversation, right? And um, uh, we thank you very much, and we're fully supportive of old home day i don't think so so thank you guys thanks niles glad you brought that up um all righty i think uh then we'll thank you very much and move on to our next agenda item we appreciate it thank you thank you and we right. look forward to seeing you there absolutely 24 <laughs> 7. okay yeah good <laughs> all right good night thanks Bye -bye. Um, so is Lori, uh, I don't see her on, uh,
remotely. Can we just do this at another time? Planning to come in person? Uh, I know we confirmed with her. Um, it is 720. Uh, Half an hour beyond. No, I don't see. 750. Was, uh, well, I'm wondering if I don't see John on the call either. I right can, on time with John. I can text yeah. him real quick. I would, um, while we're waiting, um, why don't we? Um, no, that's too much discussion. Because that's going to be a longer discussion, I think. Yeah, yeah, we have a, the, we okay, have the so, cemetery deeds to do. Are you gonna? You want me to reach out to John? Okay, I can do that. Um, David, do you want to um, take us through then while I do that? Um, he didn't get the, the minutes for the twenty four. So if that you look at the. Uh, if we go near the end, we have all these uh, cemetery deeds to approve. Yeah. It's in the consent consent number eleven. Yeah, I've got yeah. it. What yeah, would you want to do? <laughs> well, I think we should we should um well, it happened, but I got changed. Entertain it as the as the consent agenda and go ahead and uh yeah. Um adopt it. But my my one that. problem is that it says minutes on the consent agenda. You well on the on our agenda this evening it doesn't say that. Where where do you what well, do you mean? When it says go to eleven on this page. <laughs> Oh, I see, and and oh, I see. It's right. Not, so we're not going to be able to. Right, we shouldn't because you're saying those minutes are incorrect. That's correct. Okay, so um, I can. We'll have to pull out then. Uh, so we had minutes from the um, audit committee. Wasn't we it? have six two, but we don't have May twenty fourth. Oh. So I but guess we don't. We. So I don't understand how you move this this. Um, Agenda. You just this, list all the, or you, well, I, you can put a hold on anything. Anybody can yell hold. Okay. So let me give it a shot then. I move to approve, and you need to be, you're going to be texting John. Yeah. I move to approve the draft meeting meeting minutes for 6 2 2022 is presented on June 14th, 2022. And the town and school expense warrants. Uh, the following, we, the warrants. we don't have to move the warrants and the cemetery deed transfer request. I move that the select board vote to transfer land in the public burial ground at the Green Cemetery described as follows. Deed 777, lot D22, graves 1, 2, 3, and 4 to Travis Snell. Um, because he, he just got on the board. And, board <laughs> yeah, 632 School Street. We waited 20 years for that. Deed 778, lot D 150, graves one and two to Peter and Catherine Mastro Marino at 212 East Riding. Deed 779, lot D 403, graves one, two, and three to Daniel and Elizabeth Mosley at 94 Stern Street. Deed 780, lot D 407, graves one, two, three, four, five, and six to Daniel and Elizabeth Mosley at 94 Stern Street. Deed 781, lot D 20. Seven, grave one to Nancy Hartle and Steve Tobin at 164 Partridge Lane. Deed 782, lot D207, graves two and three to Mark and Wendy Barrow at 166 6, Fisk Street. Deed 783, lot C17, grave one to Eva Herdington, 82 Hillside Drive. Deed 784, lot D208, graves three and four to Anthony Mariano at 48 Pagebrook Road. <coughs> deed 785, lot D 289, graves 1, 2, 3, and 4 to Sean and Lauren McDonough, 61 Wolf Rock Road. Deed 786, C 18, grave 1 to Robert and Sally Zielinski, 82 Acton Street. And deed 787, lot D 147, graves 1 and 2 to Barry Gannick and Amy Fennick at 532 River Road. Boy, I know a lot of these people. It's amazing. All buying graves. Too. They're all young. <laughs> okay. Second. <laughs> so, is there any discussion? Okay. Well, okay. Yes. <laughs> well, we have a quorum. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, actually, 
I guess still do a roll call vote. Do a roll yes, call? we note do. That, note that Mr. Brown is on leave. Right. So, all right. So there are um, four of us here, and Travis Snell is going to abstain. Um, so I would like a roll call vote, please. Um, Arnold, I. Reed, I. Okay. All right. So these have been approved, and I will. So, in the future, on the consent agenda, uh, agenda, could uh, could we not put the warrants on it? The warrants are not supposed to be on. We no, talked to Jen about that. Okay. Correct. Thank you. okay. All right. So do we have John or we don't? Yeah. Shall we roll? I think we, we have do to respond to PA report. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, let's do that. Oh. Call from, um, from, uh, drive oh, oh, yeah, okay. well, that's okay. You have to take that. You want to just. Take so, actually, I can say the timber nut. Yeah. <laughs> um, Steve and I took a walk um, this morning to look at the site, and it uh, has some more cleaning up that needs to be done. And I believe that Steve uh, wrote them a memo asking them when they thought they would be finished cleaning it. So, right. Um, yeah. Uh, they just ended their program on Friday. Hey yeah. there. So they, nice they, they have a, in, at in least person. one truck road load more. Yeah. Part out of there. Yeah. Um, I, let's see the, uh, well, on the uh, sustainability director, um, uh, Steve's been meeting with um, the, uh, Westford staff person, and they're going to actually have interviews um, this week. Uh, and they, unfortunately, they they've they've had a couple of people drop out, but um, they've decided that if this the, the remaining candidates um, are not, uh, you know, if they don't find somebody that they really like, they may be posted. Um, and. Nathan, do you know how to reboot the uh, the internet, the modem, or whatever here? Because nobody can get on the internet. Uh, Steve might have that. Yeah. It can't be worse than what we've got now. <laughs> that, uh, right? No Wi-Fi. Sorry, I meant to. I meant Wi-Fi. Well. Um, I actually did. I always I ran diagnostics and it just didn't get me anything. Um, let me continue on because I okay, sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Steve reviewed quite a bit of this with me yeah. yesterday when we met. So um, the time been... on the uh, wage study. Um, He's been in conversation with St Sandy Stapzinski of the firm that is um, doing the wage study for us. And she's pretty much done um, for the non-union personnel <clears throat> based on the um, on her review. Um, we'll, we'll then plan to have a presentation to the board probably sometime in July, early July. Um, the brick building window replacement, as you can see, uh, the quotes have come in about the replacement for the brick building windows, and uh, it looks like the cost is going to be less than fifty thousand. Um, only one price was submitted from the six contractors, the proposals that were sent to six contractors. So supple construction has been awarded the contract for forty nine nine ninety five. And the project will be paid out of recreation revolving funds. And finally, uh, Steve has arranged for the DPW to um, get some of the shrubs removed and replaced with grass um, outside town hall. Well, he's asking our permission to do that. I uh, I request permission. Oh, you're correct. Sorry. Um, so we should. Um, Does anybody have any problem with getting rid of all those dead taxes? <laughs> 
and uh, putting it across the room. So, so why don't you make an official motion? I, I move that we re, uh, remove the dead shrubs and replace with grass. It wasn't Second. plugged in. Well, that will do it every time. All right. Any discussion about removing the shrubs around town hall? All right. Then we can do this by voice vote since we have Nathan here. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. It's about removing the. Okay. Uh, the Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Advisory Committee met on June 3rd. Um, their recommendation to the select board is. Okay. No, it's not. I see. David. Yeah. Um, let's try not to have a lot of side talk, though, if we can, only because this is. Yeah. Or turn your mic off. Um, that'd be good. Um, so the the committee is uh, voted to recommend to the select board the extension of a pathway down Concord Road to Palmer Way, and um, it's we're not being asked to vote on it tonight, uh, but it will come back to us after the DPW director has had a chance to do some estimated cost and and. Uh, a source of funds have been identified. In addition, an advisory sign for a 25 mile per hour zone will be placed in the vicinity of 566 Acton Street at the curve as a first step in trying to mitigate speeding traffic. Where it crosses near West Street or Acton. It's in the. Yeah, I'm not. And then the sealer of weights and measures, as we, as Steve has mentioned to us before, he's been talking to um, Acton about taking that on since we now are required to have those inspected and um, they've agreed to do so. And from what I've understood, there's not going to be a charge. Correct. That, so. And we only have two scales in town. Regionalization. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The there first go. step. The first benefit of regionalization yeah. for the town. Um, we do have a request that we need to vote on tonight from the Historic Society asking that we allow Wilson Chapel to be open for Old Home Day weekend. Um, oh, I guess they don't have the hours yet, but um, should we wait to hear back to something more official or? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, well, no, we have one the end of June, but that's awful close. Old Home Day is on the 25th. Oh, gosh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I was thinking it was July. All right. So we do. We let's make. Let's. Um. I would like to have a motion to allow them to open Wilson Chapel. Why don't we just say generally, um, over Old Home Day weekend at our at hours of their choosing. We we did that for Memorial Day, but they yeah. like to also open it. Uh, yeah, for it was Memorial the, Day. The, yeah, and apparently it was very well received. Right. So. So can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second, great. Any discussion? All right, uh, let's do this by voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. That is. Yep. We're just, we're this we're just reading it, it ourselves yeah, because, because we don't Steve really need to. tied up, yeah. <laughs> um, and we're waiting for. And here he is back. Here he is. Oh, sorry, okay. No problem. No. Uh, it seems like it's a Wi-Fi problem, and uh, I, I, I think it is. You believe right. that the item up there on top of the cabinet? Right. Didn't have it upstairs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just the phone. Yeah. Right. I, I, Steve, we've been going through your administrative for support, and we're down to the um, authorization to sign warrants. Do you want to pick it up from here, or you want me to continue? <laughs> <laughs> At least I get my pay now. Then. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you if you're ready. You go for it. <laughs> uh, I'm not being uh, able to sign. Uh, the town so town has asked that uh, that the select board authorize uh, the chair or the vice chair, and then he's available to sign the payroll and bill warrants for 2023. So he has he's authorized to to sign that. So can I have a motion to um? Right. We do it every year. Right. We have a motion. I to move that uh, we authorize the chair or the vice chair to sign all payroll and bill warrants for fiscal 2022. 
We have a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote then. Roll call. I mean, sorry, not voice. Voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. Okay, now we have a request uh, from the police department to dispose of uh, four computers that are basically out of date here. It's going to support the current application. Uh, we'll destroy the hard drives and the units themselves. Oh, sorry, thank you. We'll be given to Drive Tech, who has a uh, disposal resource to get rid of them. So uh, we need authorization. We do have the uh, serial numbers here. I don't. Was we could fill those Move approval of the disposal of four computers, serial numbers 2UA6233C6K and 2UA6233C57, 2UA7301YDO, uh, or is that O0? DO0. 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 And 2UA7301YF5. Second. Okay. 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 Sure. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. And I just have one other one other quick item. Uh, Nathan and I were on a conference call with our uh, our, our uh, uh, cable uh, uh, consultant and town council today, kind of going over some of our main issues for uh, rene for negotiation on the franchise agreement with Comcast. We will be having a session with Comcast uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, hopefully, we'll make some progress. Good, that's good news. And then, just please, everyone, note the. Uh, meetings that are listed here um, in particular the one a week from Thursday is our special meeting to interview the three finalists and that meeting is scheduled to start at five as you'll recall and um, the plan is that we'll convene at five um, just make sure we're all uh, set to go in terms of the way we're going to handle the meeting which hopefully we'll get to on tonight's agenda um, and then uh, the first uh, candidate will be scheduled to uh, come to talk with us at 5.15 for an hour. Then we'll have a dinner break. Uh, and I think Jen wrote to everyone and said what, um, what she was going to provide. So we'll have a half an hour dinner break. And then um, at um, quarter of seven, yes we will have the next candidate, then a 15 minute break, and then the final candidate. And then we had discussed earlier that we were gonna hope to make a decision that night and we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, and while I'm on this topic, since I don't see John, um, the uh, paradigm, community paradigm, our search consultant is going to provide to Steve our town administrator on Thursday, their packet, um, which will uh, indicate, which will include the three finalists' resumes, cover letters, their background checks and reference checks, and also a work sample uh, from each candidate. And once Steve re receives that, that is then a public document. And then we will be posting that meeting uh, for the 23rd and making that information available. Uh, just to be clear, so the whole packet is going to be public. So well, I mean, the, I'm only worried like if there's like social security numbers, you know, stuff like that that might be in it. Yeah, um, they're not providing anything um, like that. Okay. Um, the, uh, the work samples uh, are separate from the... Um, what you're going to be getting as the paradigm okay. report. So the work samples are just going to be for the board's eyes only on the night of the 24th? Uh, no, uh, we'll get those in advance. I guess it's our decision about whether or not we want to okay. include the post those as well, which I don't see why we shouldn't do that. It's, um, but let's see what we get. Yeah. It also may, I'm not sure um, sort of how, how much and in what form we're, yeah. we're getting things. Um, 
So that would mean we, we would just want to get two different packets then, right? One with the public stuff and one yes, not. Yes, that would be the easiest for us to manage, I think. Right. Okay. Right. And that's the only thing on the agenda for that meeting. Um, uh, we have here also the draft agenda then for the our regular meeting at the end of the month, the June 28th meeting. Um, and so, uh, assuming we can reach a decision of, and, and select a candidate, then that candidate paradigm will, will uh, contact that candidate to say they've been selected. And then we as a select board um, should engage with that candidate uh, in the contract negotiation. So we might or might not be ready by the 28th to have an executive session to discuss that contract. We'll just have to see where we are, but that's why that's up there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, as you can see, we're, so the COVID testing, uh, you, you've probably seen some back and forth information. Um, we will still have this on the agenda because I think one way or the other, we as a select board need to, in a formal way, decide whether we're, um, whether the town is going to continue to offer that service in any, in any form. Um, and then, uh, what does this mean? <laughs> Sorry, what does this mean? Discuss town administrator final selection. Just in case you didn't make a decision. We didn't have the oh, whoa, 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 whoa. The I'm sorry. Got it. Right. Okay. So the thought was right. If we couldn't decide, thank you. And David, I was away in the development of this. But um, yeah, so if we needed another meeting uh, to make a decision about the final candidate, we would use. Probably be last. <laughs> On the agenda, right? So if we don't do it, then it doesn't mess up the schedule. Well, but all the everything else, there's no outsiders except possibly ARPA. There's only one. So it's just a schedule. I just put it last. Why does it matter? It's all internal stuff for us. If somebody wants to attend the SP, SY22 select board vote where they want to hear the town administrator report. Yeah, okay. I guess my preference would be not to do it when you're tired. <laughs> Since it's the key, make it five minutes, and it's okay if we go over. It's better to have people wait than be late. Um, we'll sort it out when we meet on the agenda. Yeah, let's let's. Um, it's a those are valid me. points. Yeah, let let's we'll follow up and and um, see how we may want to rework this. Um, yeah, we'll have to continue the annual annual appointments, which you'll, you know we have a chunk of those on the agenda for tonight. Then um, we, I think everybody received the select board goals from last year. We will, this is the meeting where we're going to do a review of those goals, and and that'll set us up then for the July meeting, and we'll have to decide when and how we want to do that. But to um, select goals for FY23, town administrators report, liaison reports, and then the consent agenda, and. Um, I do know from uh, just double check because I think we didn't have something today. We talked. Um, we we talked. Uh, yeah, I don't have my notes from when we met. Okay. Um, uh, I, well, one was the uh, was the uh, um, COVID testing. Right, which which is on yeah, here. So, right. Um. um that, and I, did you think, Kate, that there? We have a any... we're going to have a, a police officer appointment. Uh, that's right. The one from the upcoming budget year. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other uh, agenda items that people want to suggest for this meeting? Were you going to ask me about something? Oh, yeah. Were, was there any other um, ARPA grant requests that yes. you were thinking you might put forward? Yes. Okay, so yeah. we should. That's why we. Uh, yeah. So oh, instead yeah. of just, we'll have, we'll separate our oh, yes, grants absolutely. from I, I, COVID testing okay. discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, just put our just take COVID off because that'll be part of our discussion with you as well. Right. Yeah. ARPA was okay. going to discuss it yeah. with you, so just put ARPA grants. Yes. We have. Okay. All righty. Anything else on the draft agenda for the twenty eighth? Okay. All right. Uh, so.
so let's go back to the agenda for tonight. Uh, I I don't know what is what happened with John. both Laurie and um, maybe they couldn't get on. John, it, it may be that they tried to get on, but I would think that John would have texted me or you, Steve, or yeah, tried to. Uh, I'm gonna text him. I guess I should probably just text him. Yeah, and he did get my message. Um, so what we've done with this is the end of the old home day. Waiting on well, I can lead the conversation about the town administrator interviews because John and I went over this. Um, and I think it's important. We have to do it tonight since it's coming up. Um, so let me just pull up my notes from the conversation with him. Come on, um, my computer is. Yeah, okay. Not so right um, in your packet, and I'm sorry it got sent out again today. I, I didn't realize it was in our packets already, which, yeah. so we provided the um, questions that we had used for the screening committee. Um, so, so you can see the things that we covered with the candidates that we interviewed for the during the the screening process and while and there and there are a lot of different topics in here and with each candidate we didn't necessarily go into depth on each topic it, it sort of depended on what their resume showed us and what their cover letter showed us and which areas we decided we wanted to explore further with a you know with a particular person but these were the general um topics uh and i will say on the economic development one this is we we didn't really discuss this in any great length um because obviously carlisle with because for the reasons we all know we don't have a lot of options for um economic development um so this is just to give you an idea of what we covered which the three finalists went through with us. Um, and so I think what we want to think about is the select board uh, are sort of the, what are the key content areas that, oh, John, you're on. Yes, I'm sorry. I thought it was 840 you had said, but I apologize for the delay. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, that that may have been my fault, John. I'm really sorry. I may have Oh yeah. I think I was looking at an old agenda. Okay, uh, my apologies. I, that, no, 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 you have no apology needed. That's my bad. Um all right. So um so you probably heard what I was I, I had just reviewed the, the sheets that are in our packet about the questions we asked the candidates last time. I okay. also went over I also went over with people the um the format we talked about, uh and not the format, but the schedule. Um, so that we have an hour for each candidate and the times that you and I talked about. So we're all set on that. So what I was just starting to introduce was um, that we need to uh, identify for you um, what sort of the key content areas or other uh, um, areas that we want to explore with each of these candidates. Um, and maybe before we do that, I should explain that um, for the for the screening committee, uh, the way we set it up, and this was something we as a group talked about and, and decided to do it this way, was we had, uh, and it's a little bit actually the way we all um, experienced it with the um, interim town administrator interviews, where uh, we had a set of um, sort of general questions or topic areas, and then John initiated the questions with the candidates so we could really focus on listening to their responses and doing follow-up questions. And if we're comfortable with that again, I, I would recommend that because it worked really well with the screening committee. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know that's that's just my opinion. And if if the members of the board prefer to do it differently, so for instance, want to have one member, you know, asking the question or questions about some particular area instead of John being the point person on the questions, uh, you know, we should discuss that. But if everybody's comfortable with that format that we used for the interim 
uh, town administrator interviews, I, I personally think that worked quite well. Any comments on that? I think it's fine. We comfortable doing it that way? That sound fine okay? I know you were, yeah. Sounds fine to me. Okay. All right. All right. So that's the way we'll go forward then, John. And um, yeah, so do you want to want to just kind of uh, sort of give us a, I don't know, a way to think about how we want to do these interviews, given that these three candidates have already been through, um, you know, answering a set of questions uh, that are in our packet? Sure. So I can forward you some different questions uh, to review. <clears throat> um, come up with some different questions, some ideas, and, um, you know, because we, and I guess I need to understand how much background would you like to hear in the questioning, and how much, you know, what, what type of questions would you really like to uh, delve into, uh, and that's kind of, you know, you can see from the outline, we, we hit many of the, uh, the major areas of being a town administrator, uh, and we we can go through that again. I can come up, come up with slightly different questions, you know, in the next round of the interview. So I, I guess I'm open for discussion with the board on how you want that done. So John, can I ask you an exculpatory? Is that the right word? Question. Sure. I, you know, Barney has seen the candidates, and you have. But are we? And we'll have the resume packets. But before we get into questions, are you, are they going to walk sort of through their? professional history? Yeah, I think it always is, you know, beneficial to start with them providing background to the board. You know, the opening question you can see is, you know, um, you know, would you please take a few minutes to tell you, uh, tell, uh, you know, tell us about yourself, you know, and why you're interested in Carlisle. And, um, and I can get into further, you know, uh, uh, questions if they haven't quite, you know, hit certain areas. Okay, got it. And then but the typically, probe. excuse me, David, but just to respond um, with the screening interviews, because we had their resumes and their cover letters in advance, um, we we didn't go into great detail on things that were already included in but, their resume. Um, but but well, I respectfully disagree. No, no, but with why that. don't you explain sort of what you're looking for? Right. Yeah. So I think that's okay because you were vetting, but this is for real now, right? And every cover letter and every resume goes through one's history but all interviews interviews ask in their own words like tell me about yourself like where did you oh, grow yeah. up yeah, yeah, yeah. so i definitely wouldn't shortcut that just because they wrote it down we want to hear what they have to say about no i, are, I just meant we we didn't have you, them basically tell us everything that was already you were doing the volume business at that point maybe we were well well we only have an hour you know what? No, this is no, the PA. I don't know what to yeah, talk. No, no, I had completely agree with you. I'm just. I think there's some. Uh, I completely agree with you. We can you. budget the time, like five minutes or ten minutes, but mm -hmm. I yeah. do think it's. Yeah, good. yeah. No, I, I don't have any problem at all with asking them to tell us about themselves. I mean, I think that's a great idea. My point was more yeah. that I think um, we 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 want to think about uh, are there particular either content areas or um, skills or experiences that we really want to explore in depth. Right. And that's kind of the second that's part. That's sort of the second part, but it's also incumbent on them. Yeah. I mean, all questions and answers are revealing, right? So it's incumbent on candidates to, you know, pick from their resume things they think would resonate with us. Yeah. John, are you prepping these guys? <clears throat> I can I usually don't prep to a great extent. I can set expectations for them. And so with this, I can set an expectation with them that uh, they will be um, you know, intended to give a reasonable review of their history, uh, what they're proud of you know, in that history in the first uh, five minutes or so. Uh, yeah, so you might add to, um, to uh, Barney's point, it's relevance to what they perceive the position at Carlisle to be. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And just one last question as a background question, the probes, that's kind of more notes for us, right? The questions are you giving the questions and then the probes are things we just should sort of home in on. Is that the intention so of that? The way it works is typically I provide one or two questions, but the probes are additional questions based on the discussions I've had with the screening committee. Um, 
So like with the leadership, um, you know, we, we ask those questions that you see. And then I asked additional questions around the probes, such as how do you build morale in an organization of, of this uh, uh, basis? How do you resolve conflict and give them an example of a conflict situation? So those were questions uh, we were asked. We asked in addition to what was in the potential question section. Okay. So there was more than one also question the, per section. Yeah, and then, then individual select board members could follow up right, mm -hmm. and say, and I, you know, I want to ask more about X. Um, yeah, I have, I have, um, I, I see that there's, you know, a lot of things about individual, you know, um, abilities like personnel management and stuff, but I'm kind of interested in a more visionary um, question where, you know, we, I've lost volume. Uh oh. Hello? Anybody hear me? Uh, am I back? Can you hear me? Hey, Nathan, how you doing? <laughs> Good, how you doing, John? We're all, we're all gonna jump on via computer. Okay, great. He heard me, I, I could hear him. Oh, okay. I'm gonna just put on my, just click on the link, it will add it. Because the video link wasn't working earlier, you know, either on yours. Yeah, it was frozen. We decided yeah. to go there anyway. Recording in progress. <laughs> hey, Bonnie. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, no, you got Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that our No. So we're getting feedback.
Ya. Can you hear us? John, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Nathan, yeah. You, yeah, yes, exactly. All right. Uh, all right. Just okay. But I think we lost. Uh, no. John, are you? Oh, you're still on, John. Great. Okay. Oh, gosh. My apologies to those that are still on the call, the, the, the patient, long suffering um, participants. Thank you. Um, so, John, we were. Uh, starting to just, we were in the middle of discussing other questions. Kate had brought up the, yeah, sort of a, a larger um, big picture about how you bring on all kinds of new staff people um, and build a team. So is that um, some, it, it may be yeah. that it's just really a slight, um, change into one of the questions you already had down. I can, I can really you know, focus on that. Very flexible, whatever you're trying to Oops, look for. Now we can't hear you John. Know, uh, I can't. Can you hear John, Nathan? Now you have to turn your volume up. Uh, oh, this. All listen, John. OK, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. OK. okay. Oh, Lordy. Did you hear what I, sorry. Did yeah, you? Yeah, I, can, I heard you. So um, okay. very flexible in building questions here. So okay. that's not an issue. That's why we, you know, I'm here to get a understanding. And by the way, uh, Travis, uh, nice to meet you. Congratulations. So uh, I don't think we've uh, had discussions, but uh, um, I, I see we're dealing with a slightly different board now. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. Um, so uh, board members, other um, areas that you think are would be important to explore with the candidates, um, or or even or questions that are already in, listed here, but you think are worth you know sort of more focus, more time. Um, are you asking generally for us? Yeah. Yeah, because this is their opportunity yeah. to, to give feedback to John and then he'll draft some. Uh, I, have, I have a couple, but I'm not you, list, so. Okay. Uh, I mean, one one that I um, think we, we should delve into a little bit is personnel and um, human resources. Yeah. And, and even if this person, you know, doesn't, see him or herself as um, taking on the actual function, what is their uh, approach and, and experience and what are the kind of key things a, um, an HR person needs to be doing? I agree. Uh -huh. um, well, David, feel free to jump in. Know, and you'll you have me, to, John? yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to try these mics again? I I'll try it. John? Oh. Yes. Hi, thank you. Hey, David, how you doing? Hi, right, good. Um, um, yeah, so, yeah, so I just had, just a, had few a few kind of, I don't know, comments, comments maybe, maybe, and maybe it'll frame some different questions. On the um, leadership, on the question about the assistant TA, I would nuance it, not just what kind of skills would you seek, but how the skills you seek from the TA to complement your skills, right? Because the point is we're, going to pick the person who's TA and then where that person has maybe weaknesses isn't the right word, but, you know, could use the skills of another person that would craft the assistant position. Mm -hmm. That was on that, that one. Um, I didn't quite, it's just in order of these questions, I didn't quite understand 
project management and then lumping in IT. I mean, they seem to me to be two separate things. We definitely want their views on IT. Project management is a different thing. So what, what was your thinking there? Yeah. Uh, it was a, a convenient place to toss IT in. Oops. So, Oops, yeah. you know, so we talked about uh, project management, their yeah. capacity to, um, uh, to be uh, MCCPO uh, certified, being able to do procurement, uh, that type of thing, and how do they manage projects. But then we also tossed in the IT, you know, uh, discussion as to how they would uh, handle IT. So it was not necessarily project management, but it was a convenient place to put an IT discussion in there. Yeah, yeah so I, I think it deserves to be promoted the main thing of that, in my opinion. Okay, I miss, uh, I'm getting feedback on your mic, David. What, what was his... Comment. I think, uh, oh, I'm right, I'm not using this. Um, I think is it, the comment is that uh, IT should be separated from, is that right? Separated yeah. from the project management. And, and if you remember, Bonnie, it was separated. Um, it was a separate, you know, question. And I can certainly form IT to make sure that it's separated from that. Thank you. Okay. And then... Barney, Barney had, talks, you have to okay, sorry. Barney, are you? <laughs> do, do mics go off or on now? I have to like that. Okay. So um, Barney mentioned the HR. So definitely in that HR thing, it's much more than personnel management. It's the whole sort of views on HR and the cult thing. You know, there's onboarding and training and yeah. all kinds of things. So we, we, we've covered that. And then um, the last one for me is the question about the uh, TA and the select board relationship with the select board. Yes. Which is fine, but there's another one. I don't know if it wants to be separate or related to that, like boards generally, because one of our issues is what I would call solid line dotted line, where, you know, staff people report to boards, us or other boards. And they have a dotted line, or sometimes it's a solid line to the TA. So they they need to understand a little bit about how we're organized, and we definitely want to hear like their views of that whole thing. So you know, I would broadly put that in the category of daytime government, nighttime government. But sure. um, you you've learned enough about us. I think you know that stuff. No, and, and it's you know I've been in that position, and it's typical of a lot of government, even bigger government you know, of, um, you know, trying to work with the volunteers and uh, understanding dotted line and solid line. And, you know, sometimes you can, you know, come in, but a lot of times you're trying to cope, you know, to, you know, to uh, work with people. So I'll make, I'll come up with something on that. That's what I got. Thanks. Nathan or Travis, um, any particular areas you want to explore? Correct. Yeah. All right. I'm not I, I, hearing I, Travis or Nathan at this point. So have you got your mic on? Uh, they were Travis thinks the questions are good and as long as they're open ended um, and then Nathan just was question just double checking that uh, these were the questions that we'd use with the screening committee, which I said. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, but I, I don't think I'm interested in revisiting every single question that was asked. That's why I was thinking about asking like a broader question instead of, you know, point by point kind of reorganizing right. them in broader terms, okay. And so how would that look, Kate? Um, what, are you thinking uh, beyond that, the question earlier that you <clears throat> framed as kind of a bigger so, picture, their view of having a you know new staff coming in and basically building a team, um, were you thinking of, uh, something more? Um, yeah, I, you know, 
because I guess I would say, you know, touching on, you know, or telling what's your vision and um, and when you're describing this, tell us how you would use, you know, per personnel management and municipal management and citizen relationships and, you know, in achieving this vision, so to speak. I, I'm, I'm not saying it right, but I'm, it, instead of asking, as I said, each individual little piece, ask how those pieces all fit together and where they lead us. What do you make of that, John? I'm trying, yeah, I, I got to think about that one. It, it gets into, Barney, remember we had a lot of discussion with screening committee, you know, not to put a candidate in a position, you know, of trying to uh, uh, make statements about Kyle because they have not been here yet to fully, you know, uh, understand the scope of the community. So I just, you know, one of the things we try not to do is put a candidate in a position of, um, estimating where they may go on a community because everybody needs to come in and get the scope and get, you know, talk to a lot of people before a vision is developed. But, you know, to talk about how would they do that vision, you know, so what would be the process for them, you know, to come up with, you know, what would be their first steps to come up with, you know, uh, uh, developing a work plan or suggestions to the select board as to where they may go, you know, after a certain period of time. I think that's a, yeah, fair, very fair comments that you've made there, so. Okay, so I can ask something around a pro, you know, what process would they utilize to, you know, to get a feel for the town and then to develop a set of goals, you know, uh, to work with, with the board. Yeah, isn't uh, just I mean, I'm going to turn to um, Steve here because you have a lot of experience and the board. But the, I mean, it's a good preparatory mind framing question in in my mind. And this may be unfair. OK, but if I look at like the superintendent and school committee, I look for the superintendent to be visionary and the school committee to kind of guide it. And then he's got the staff. But I look at the T.A more making the trains run on time and the select board guiding the vision I mean, that may be wrong i just i want to understand where we're coming from do we want a visionary like steve like coming in he's very knowledgeable he knows about a lot of things and he just makes things happen and that's great and kind of we do broadly together reach our vision we're not looking for a vision um I want your, you know, I'd like to hear you and others what they have to. Say. Well, you know, it, I think is a function of the of the of of the, the nature of the, of this town's government. I mean, you know, I came from a world of a strong town manager, so there was an expectation that that person would be a visionary, and and that the board of selectmen would seek that person having having vision. You know, here, as you say, it's a little different. It's it's, you know, the the board is the board is, is the chief executive. You know, you guys set goals. Um, truly up to the town administrator to set to understand the goals work with different departments and, and other boards to make the goals happen so it's a little different you know from the world i i lived in for 40 years but uh, you know i i think that yeah it might be a little unfair to say visionary maybe that's too strong a word i mean somebody that can look at things creatively and and come to the board with some proposed solutions in a, in a creative uh, manner might be appropriate yeah i also think it gives you more in more um, consistency through the years if the manager, you know, has a vision and is and is there making recommendations to the select board. Yes, the select board can kind of steer it, but I, I, you know, if you get somebody else who has some other idea, suddenly you know you swerve and but, nothing ever gets done. But part of the vision is like you guys are going to do goal setting, right? So right. part of the vision is for that for the administrator to understand first your goals. And, and 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 create a vision out of those goals. How do you make that happen? Yeah. Right. So. Right. And also, so I think I agree. Use the mic. I agree completely with with what Kate was just saying. I was just going to say it. I think maybe visionary is too strong, but I I I think the town administrator 
is at the table when we're setting the goals, right? Yes, and, 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 you know, is, is part of the team and they are operationally and leadership wise for all, you know, for the staff implementing the goals that we're jointly coming up with. And, and I do think that it's important to have that vision across, you know, the, um, the changes of the select board so mm -hmm. that it's not like start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Yeah, right. um, so I, yeah. I think looking for vision, um, maybe not visionary, well, but leadership. certainly a very strong leadership. Leadership. Um, leadership is important. Um, other things, if I may, you know, other things that I would I would add. Um, I'm not sure where the can't. Well, I guess you're looking at me directly here. Um, uh, <laughs> other things that I would add is, you know, I think that we need to assume that having gone through the steering committee and everything. These people are very strong operationally as town administrators. And, you know, certainly we want to ask questions. We want to dig more because, you know, we're responsible for the hiring. Um, but I think looking at some things that are um, a little bit more Carlisle specific or um, focused on things that we uh, kind of the, the softer things that we we know will be um, there. So, you know, and I'm, you know, it's just like, you know, describe examples of when you worked in, you know, an, a, a matrix organization now most towns that that's the way it is but just describe how they how they how they handled that and describe how you know you led without management right you know you know uh, it's it's a key skill and just describe for us how how you were able to lead everybody even though they didn't all report to you and kind of dig into things like mm -hmm. that that are kind of the softer side of how have you dealt with morale issues? Um, you know, not saying we have one now, and maybe a little bit, but you know, how do you deal with with morale issues? Um, I think would would also be good types of questions to ask. I agree. I think the success or failure is going to be the soft skills here, not necessarily knowing. Mm -hmm. They're all going to know the the rules, yeah. right? They're all yeah. well, so they wouldn't be sitting there. Yeah, it's kind of like management by influence more mm -hmm. than anything, right? So, exactly. Yeah. No. I guess, you know, um, we did ask a question of our interim and uh, there was one particular question. It was a, 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 a scenario. A scenario. Yeah. I would, um, wouldn't mind asking that same question again, because I think it told us a lot about of our, our, our um, candidates at that time. And <laughs> well, yeah, well, which I don't either. <laughs> no, well, I do. It was, a, a, if you had a, um, staff meeting and you asked your staff to do a particular training and one uh, a department head said they refused to do it because they said they were too busy. How would you handle that situation? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good question and I think it should be asked again. I'm sure, uh, I, I assume John still has the way we wrote yeah, it. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, so. Um, it was I, asked a little bit differently, but yeah, you you had a version of that in there, and and I think it was it it separated the men from the boys. It was a good one. It was very good. Uh, yeah. Must have been good. <laughs> yeah, I have it here if you want me to read it, but I know you know, so I can incorporate that one. Yes. Yeah, I would love to see that question again. I think it really did help us visualize the management skill of the of the person. Sure. You know, yeah, we can incorporate that one. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, I, I, whatever was funny, I didn't hear, so. <laughs> well, it was kind of what is probably a, a good thing. A good thing. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, now, the other thing is we are going to have their work sample. And I think we should um, come up with a couple of questions, or maybe John, you have a suggestion about how to ask them about that. Like I'm thinking, um, you know, what 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 were either what was the most challenging about this? Uh, how about if we if we do it, you know, maybe it's specific questions about each work sample that you may have, so you can you know you can ask them. You know, we can we can save you know, let's say five minutes, and then let the board ask particular questions about that work sample because it's going to be individual to each of the work sample. 
else. Right, yeah. right. They're not. They're not all doing the same thing. Yeah. What right. Else, what are they submitting as a work site? So, John, would you just, for the benefit of the board, um, explain what the uh, request was to the candidates? <laughs> so, um, uh, based on the uh, discussion we had, the long discussion we had with the screening committee, and uh, on Bonnie's direction, I've asked each of the candidates to provide a work sample. Um, something that they wrote, you know, um, it could be a, a budget message, it could be a proposal, you know, to the select board or a warrant article proposal where they gave an explanation to town meeting, but something that was their personal work product that they that they provided so that you could see that. Okay. We had a lot of discussion around this and I put that on the table as an alternative to some of the things that were, you know, placed on the table, you know, at the time. Which we've done in other places. So this is, it's, it's been, uh, this type of format has been used before. So everybody comfortable with that? We'll have a, a section at the, um, as part of the interview where we can each ask about the work sample that was provided. Okay. Other um, broad or other particulars that people want to focus on? I think we've we've covered some good ground here. Yeah, a lot of ground, yes. Yeah. Just remember we have an hour for each, you know, and, um, and as Bonnie can tell you, if you have something particularly you want to follow up on, just please feel free to, you know, intervene during the, um, the questioning um uh you know as as we go along barney are candidates live here or is it yeah all they're all going to be here in person isn't that correct john that is my you know that's what you know um my intention is unless the board wants something different but no no, it will be live no we, we want them here in person that yep so that that's yeah. what will you know occur um and if Great. you know we all know things happen in this world and i'll let you know if something you know, if, if something comes up, if someone, you know, tests positive, you know, then we have to, you know, we'll, you know, we'll have to, you know, uh, figure out how we handle it at that time. Um, so, uh, you know, we run into more situations today than we have in the past, you know, so. What, okay. um, what times did you, you know, you were going to work out, Bonnie, what times did we actually work out uh, for uh, Thursday? Yeah, 515 for the first interview. Yeah. And then uh, at 6.15, we take a 30-minute dinner break. So no, no, nothing's going on then. Gotcha. And, okay. And then at, uh, at 6.45 is the second okay. interview. And, and then at, at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. The 15-minute break between the second and third interview. Gotcha. And then we have the final interview and then time for us to debrief. Nine and then nine to ten, we have another. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So the intent is to see if you can come to a decision uh, that Thursday night. Correct. Great. Thank you. So I can right. let the candidates and we, know. And if for some reason or other we we are unable to reach a, a decision, then we will um, do that at our next scheduled select board meeting, which is on the twenty eighth, the following Tuesday. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, the following Tuesday. Okay. All right. Um, anything else that we wanted to cover, John? I don't believe so. I think I can work something up from uh, from this at this point. Okay. And then, yeah, if you would, um, uh, if it's possible for us to take a look at that, um, I don't know if you could get that to me this week, then mm -hmm. is there any, if anybody has any brainstorms or, you know, we can, I can send that out to folks or Steve can, and we sure. can finalize it. Okay. I'll work on this uh, Thursday and Friday um, uh, and get you something from there. Okay. That's great, so it, John. It's a public meeting, so others can yeah. listen in, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a public meeting, but it'll be, yeah, just, just us doing the questions and yeah. So are you going to hold it in your in that room at town hall? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
and it's going to be a hybrid meeting so um residents and staff will be welcome to part you know join uh watch the interviews right. listen to the interviews so will they be here yes they've been requested to be here so. yeah. yeah all right thank you john we're we're getting close yeah so exciting okay great can't wait to get uh, rid of steve you know I just, I just on, on my behalf, I just want to thank the board for the uh, the screening committee. It was truly an excellent screening committee. We we had some, you know, I had some fun working with those group uh, with those folks, and um, it was uh, was uh, actually a joy to you know to, you know to talk to them and get into my favorite topic being local government. But they were all uh, excellent uh, members of the committee, and I just want to thank you for putting that together. Um, it was one of the better ones I've worked with, you know, over time. So. Uh, I, I truly enjoyed our banter during those meetings too. Right. Uh, so. I had to <laughs> yeah, keep well, Bonnie on the control once in a while, but you know, other than that, you know, things, you know, <laughs> things went very well uh, with the committee, you know, so. Yeah, he, he kept talking about how he had to deal with the chair of the various boards that he's worked with. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, John. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Exactly, and I'll get back to you, Bonnie, with things. And uh, and uh, as to the uh, to the candidates and the questions, I'll get those forwarded to Steve on Thursday, so that uh, he can incorporate uh, into uh, final packets for you folks. Yeah, great. And then yeah, and so and you're gonna submit the uh, paradigm, the report from paradigm to Steve on Thursday. That's as what well. I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So it's the report. The, um... Yeah, the report will have um, will have the candidates uh, resumes um and uh their cover letter as well as a report from us if there are questions you know please contact me and i'll, I'll be glad to address uh anything with the background uh but there's certainly nothing to bring to your attention on background of these three candidates um uh they all you know uh, did very well in background check John to Steve, I just have a quick question. So there's nothing you'd be sending that would preclude us from making it public. That's correct. Okay. So what you'll get from us is redacted with phone numbers and stuff like that, you know. Um, um, so it will be slightly redacted uh, so that we redact what we need to. Um, but it's just a couple of those minor items. Um, but everything it is, a, you know, we recognize it's a public document. That's why we put, you know, we're very positive in our review discussion because, again, this will follow candidates potentially. So, uh, but I have nothing further to add with these candidates. But if you have questions, that's why I say please give me a call and I'll be glad to address anything with the board. Great, John. Thank you again. Okay. We'll see Good you night, soon. all. Take care. Good night. Bye bye. Um, Lori Eckler reports she thought it was tomorrow. So we're going to uh, schedule her for hopefully next time. All right, well, that's good to know then. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's see, where are we on time? 9.01. Uh, let's see if we can uh, start the, the discussion about our liaison assignments and see where we get on that. And then um, if we have time, we can look at the orientation for the volunteer board. Just wondering, we have the annual appointments. We have a portion of those in our packet. I'm wondering if we should just move those. Start. Let's do those. Yes, Let's do those. they're fair, fairly uh, straightforward. So, um, uh, let's see. On. I gotta get the right page up here. Yeah. We're doing appointments. Okay. I move to reappoint. Uh, Joseph Topo, Carlisle Master serve as the constable in the town of Carlisle term expiring June 30th, 2023. Is that words? Just Second. rattle them all off in a consent agenda? Or? Yes, I would just say yeah. so. But that one was a, a motion that was put on there. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes. Okay, I move the appointment of the public officials as uh, presented in the annual appointments effective July 1st, 2022. And that in just quickly for the benefit of the listeners, that's um, 
various uh, town positions. Building commissioner, inspector of plumbing, accountant, the labor council, the field driver, uh, to name a few. Yeah. All right. Any discussion about that? We have to second first. Oh, sorry. We need a second. Thank you, David. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Um, before we go, to, I, ju I just want to, this is kind of editorial. Um, on Sunday, I was driving um, and listening to NPR, The Hidden Brain, and they were talking about subtraction. Did you hear that one? Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that uh, addition is not always, you know, the way to operate, that very often subtraction is, you get bit better results. Uh, and that there, for instance, there's several places where if you want to, you know, set a new law, you have to remove, subtract two laws, because what happens is, you know, those laws were done in the 1800s, they no longer, um, you know, relevant, and they were still on your books, uh, and to be more streamlined. And I'm, I'm thinking that um, our committees uh, need to, there's a couple of subtractions that ought to happen on our committees, maybe a couple of additions where you take one committee and add it to another committee. We've done a little of this already, but I think we should, um, I would like us to consider doing that before we totally do our liaison thing. Uh -huh. um, but anyway, that, that's I my little. With you. Pardon, Nathan? I said I would agree with her. Yeah. Okay. So um, we still have some other. But we have some other appointments okay. to make. Right. Uh, the Historic Commission put oh, yeah. forward yeah. Uh, a number of people to be appointed. Um, COA and all that. We have a whole I just had a, a quick question before we do that, just yes. because. So, in looking at the the um, town boards and committees pages, um, what were the check marks and the highlights? The check marks, I'm told, I asked Jen that. The check marks are those who have indicated a willingness to be reappointed, I think. Yes. The, uh, I'm not sure the bold. I, the I bold are people, uh, oh, I thought that they were people that had to be reappointed or appointed. No, so, right. no, they're already, then, it doesn't make sense, I guess. Okay. Because the check marks are people who actually they don't would expire. not be reappointing anyway because their term does not expire this year. Maybe that's what it is. She told me it was. No, that, that doesn't annoying. match up either. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I was just wondering if somebody here knew I can. I, I think can. the highlight is just the, you know, committee gets a highlight. Well, I know that Affordable Housing Trust, for instance, uh, both I and Mark Leviton are, our terms are expiring and we have both indicated that we would like to be reappointed. But they're not expiring. It doesn't expire. To this. No, this is the new term. That would be the new term. Oh. Oh, it's a two-year oh. term. Oh, that's very confusing. Are we doing a two-year two term? Yes, because so is it two year, housing well, trust. So it should have said two-year on, I see. Yes. So it is, in fact, that is very so the, confusing. The so it's do. very confusing. Names in bold are people that need, are, need to be reappointed. reappointed. And the check mark so is that terms are ending in the check is that they'd like they to be reappointed. Indicated that they'd like to be reappointed. But the assumption is uh, yeah. not that those that aren't checked, we no, don't just, know that those that aren't checked don't want to be so reappointed. The only ones they just, we could reappoint well, are the ones that are bolded and checked. Right. Got it. That's okay. right. If, frankly, if they didn't want to be reappointed, they are listed as vacant in bold. Okay. Oh, okay. And the ones, so the one, so, well, okay. So you have conservation restriction. Every, it's only a one year term. So everybody has to be re reappointed. Everybody has indicated that they would like to be reappointed. Okay. Who came up with these terms? What term? Or why are some three and some one? And oh, well, those terms. are part of the charter. It's yeah. decided when the charter. What, what drove that? And, and how it's, does whatever the select board, whoever the select board was at the time that put the right. charter together, determined what the term would be? And, and can you ever change that? Sure, we yeah. can just change the tar charter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we ought to think about whether we want these so annual. We want to talk to the people on the committee before changing it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, well, I agree with that. And there have been some where they have been changed because they said this is ridiculous. We, you know, being done every year. Why would you have an? Yeah, I mean, you're in a year out. don't we do most things three years? Most of them, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, seems weird. Well, I have been part of some of those discussions where some committees it was harder to get people. And so it was easier if it was a shorter commitment. Right. Well, in fact, when I was on planning board, I used 
it, they used to be five year terms and I was the one that suggested we do three year term and people would do two terms and they would actually stay there for six years. <laughs> but also when they're uniform, like the one year, you have a complete, you yeah, know, yeah, you, always you have, have people coming back, but you can't ensure a rotational, That's correct. you know. Okay. Sorry, I brought us down that path. No, it's okay. So I think we did get so, this squared away, though, and, and to understand what the fold and the checks mean. So what do we want to do? Are we going to follow okay. through on um, this? You know, given the time, are there any of these that uh, are time sensitive between now and our next meeting on the 28th? They don't expire until um, the end of June. They expire at the end of June. So if we Pretty did tight. these appointments then, um, I just. There's some drew any attention to me was um, historic, but that relates to the uh, the planning board rep, who it's a nominee that the board would have to uh, uh, approve. But planning board met last night. I have no idea what they did about it. Well, also CPC is so. For instance, Helen Young is the conservation commission representative to CPC. So if she doesn't get reappointed from the conservation commission. She cannot be on the CPC. Where is CPC even showing up here? I don't know. It's um, at the bottom of the first page. Community oh. bottom left. Conservation committee. Okay. And this actually has you on for a two well, year I, term. And so that shouldn't be that way, right? Not unless I get yeah. appointed. No. You know, I'm, I'm interested in continuing, but unless somebody else wants to be on the CPC. Yeah. Is, I thought there was a CAHT rep on the CPC. There is. There doesn't be. seem to be one listed. Well, that's because uh, Kathy Keller is listed there, but she's going off the board, so we need a new person. Oh, yeah. She's Kathy representing Keller's... historical. So. Right. Yeah. She, no, she's off. I thought that's what she's... CHC was. When you... No, no, I'm sorry. Housing Trust. I'm, I oh, thought there was a Housing it Trust rep. There should be on CPC, should... correct. Yes. It should Where's show that? more vacant of the Housing it Trust. Show one it should show one. vacant. Yeah. Should be more... yeah. So, I think we should work on this a little bit. I think we got to work on this. Yeah, we should work on it too. Um, and it's so Maureen Deary, and anyway, she Maureen rolled Deary. off. Well, so we got, let's take this up with Jen. Roll. She said she will roll off. She will roll off. There's a replacement when there's a replacement. Yeah. Not necessarily before twenty three. Right. Yeah. Correct. Um, all right. So um, yeah, let's let's. Uh, take this up at the June 28th meeting and we can work on it between now and then and get some things. Um, I think get the news out to these boards just to make sure that, they're gonna know that right, right. you know, they're doing their liaison and their, their appointments. A continuation of appointments that night. Okay. Yeah, we already have that on that agenda yeah. anyway. Okay, so let's. Um, okay, so, but you need tonight, you need, we have the constable done. Uh, Council of the Aging. Public officials. Um, now, the, um, yeah, they, they put in a specific request. No, no um, it was um, historic, I thought. Well, Wendy, the, the COA also, uh, the board approved a FY23 slate of people that is in their packet. Yeah, um, they could approve those slates. Yeah. They have their slate. And uh, that came from Wendy Barrow, Verna Gilbert, Deborah O'Kelly, the nominating committee. So we could um, hear a motion. Does everybody have that on there? Yeah, but I didn't understand who the new board members were from this. Okay. So because because it says Ann James Chair, Wendy Barrow Vice Chair, Verna Gilbert Secretary. Are you looking at this? Yes, I'm looking at that. Okay. But um, so we just. But that's their. That's their. That's their. That's what they proposed that we approve. That's what they proposed. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't remember. Two of them are we actually All right. appointing? Yeah, I well, thought no. We... Well, it says at the bottom we understand the select board has to approve our new board members. Yeah. So Which it's. Um, that's, I don't understand who only, the new board members are. We only have to are. approve the ones that are rolling on. So that's only two of them: Sally Hayden, if I'm reading this correctly, and Ann Quinn. Sally Hayden. Uh, the two twenty-three, the FY twenty-three. Um, yeah, one and two. Oh, I'm sorry, and also Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth Bojarski. 
It looks like everybody gets a T minus separate. If you look the at the board members term look at end the, at the noted fiscal year. Again, it looks so, like everybody's getting a That's a very short thing. What is it? Actually, it's nobody's uh, yeah. it doesn't make term ends in FY22, right? No, no. These are all reappointments. If you follow the, the logic that Nathan figured it out. Well, no, I'm just yeah. reading what it says at the bottom. It said the board members' terms end at the noted fiscal year. So... That was, I guess the only ones we, I think you're right, out. Nathan. You can do it out in 28 and still be no. within plenty yeah. of time. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then the other one that came in was the historic commission. Same um, thing. But that one was, I thought, clearer because Kathy's rolling off and they were worried. Where does that go? That's not in this this part of the packet. It must be somewhere else. But they yeah. don't have the planning board one yet, right? I, don't, I, don't. I think we just wait. Do them all once. Here it's under the appointments and resignations item 10. Uh, so they've recommended uh, some uh, appointments uh, for people. And then they, and then we also have an appointment to the transfer station action committee, which has been recommended. And then a, um, a resignation to accept. Well, let's accept, uh, I move, we accept with gratitude uh, and, uh, um, Travis Nail's resignation from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and Brad, you really want to let him off the hook that easily? No. <laughs> they didn't have to. Yeah, I have a second. Second. All right. Um, roll call vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, voice aye. vote. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Let's. I would like. I know the transferation transfer station action. You want to abstain from that one? Right. Travis Snell is abstaining. Um, <laughs> Doesn't want to beat his own drum, huh? Okay. Uh, and then uh, the, so Laura Snowden has a note in here uh, um, showing her, sharing her interest to be on the Transfer Station Action Committee. If we could make that appointment. Yeah, that. Um, to move that we appoint Laura Snowden of 31 Bellows Hill Road to serve on the Transfer Station Action Committee with a term to expire June 30th, 2023. And I have a second. Second. And my question is, why is it just one year? Is it just because a we we are staggering it since it's starting up a new committee? So some oh. people are coming on in one year, two, okay, some are got two. It. All right. I just yeah. wanted to be sure that that was yeah, why that, that, yeah, that was intentional. Okay. All right. Roll call vote, please. Vote. I mean, no, oh, sorry. Voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes. And then I think we should do the historical commission because yeah. they followed the format and have the notes in too. I have, I move that we appoint Chip Doing um, for a term which ends June 30th, 2023 to be a full member. Um, ben Herter, 517 Bedford Road to serve as a full member. Christy O'Shea, 144 Fifth Street to serve as a full member and Ed Rolf, the former planning board rep to continue to serve as an alternate member of the historic commission. I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So, all right. So they're down one, right? They have to right. get a rep from planning board. And yeah. we need to, um, I'll just say this publicly, right? I think, we need to somehow coordinate with them on this playground issue. Right? Yes. That's an action item. So now that they're appointed, we should yes. maybe invite them in or them in school. I mean, somehow we can figure that. out a way to yeah help them um, yeah. work on that. All right. So we are going to take up the other appointments uh, at our June 28th meeting. So let us now go to the liaison assignments for the select board and see where we get on that. So if you um, will go to that part of your packet. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. Dr. 
Yeah, yeah, it's going to be that. Okay. So um, this has been grouped a little differently to show, um, well, just the, the first section is town departments um, with an indication. The ones that are in bold are indicating town departments that take more uh, time and attention generally. Um, and so there are five listed here. And uh, so, you know, we all just submitted those that we were interested in. And um, some people are, have indicated that we're serving. So the incumbent, some, in some cases, that person wants to continue. And in some cases, uh, that person is, is not interested in continuing. So one way we could do this first section is um, think about, do we want to, I see that we have Nathan and Travis for the DPW, Nathan, Kate, and Travis for fire, Nathan, Kate, and Travis for police. We could tie to divide this up so that um, one of each of you takes the DPW, fire, and police. Rather, you know what I'm saying? So Nathan would have one, Kate would have the other, and Travis would have the other um, so that it's not too heavy a load for anyone. Um, I don't know if that seems like a reasonable way to approach this or someone has an alternative suggestion. Okay with me. That's fine with me. And I think, uh, let's see. I, I also don't think, you know, one person should have like all the departments and then no, we should spread right. You know, I think it, the department should be spread among yeah. the um, select board. Yeah. And so before we the, dive in, can I make one other statement? So I built this chart and I bolded, and it's really me in some consultation with Kate. The bold was my read of the time consuming nature of the liaison assignment. It doesn't really, um, it's not to grade how important it is or otherwise. It's just which ones seem like they're more time consuming for the liaison. Uh, and so as we go through, we should just bear in mind balance, especially of those bolded ones because of people's time. So thank you. Right. I think it's also important to identify those where it's a liaison and those where it's an appointment, right? Huh. Because yeah. I'm looking at affordable housing trust. That's actually not a liaison. No, it's not. Right. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, that's so, a good point. You know, a liaison, you're really there as a contact. If anybody right. has any issues, you'll go if right. they but, need right. you to be there. It's not right. That's a good point. Constant. You go to every single meeting. So we should change that. Yeah, we should note that 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 appointment one yeah. is a very and, time. And that, that's you're going to every meeting, right? You're, yep. Yeah. Right. right. So I'll keep track as we go through, and I'll note majors, minors, and actually assign. Uh, what's it called? Appointments. 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 So okay. for maybe for the benefit of um, yeah, all of us, yeah. What? Yes. Yeah. And, and before we go too far, uh, the housing trust, I'm currently the appointed, you know, representing the select and board. I've, I've stepped up to come for another term, or at least a year. But at the end of this year, I may or may not run, or if I run, I may or may not win. So my feeling, at, um, the charter of the housing trust says, up to two select board members. And I was thinking maybe one of you would want to join me on the trust um, as kind of a, a succession plan mm -hmm. as well. So uh, just throw that out there. So you were already, appointment, you were already that, at least one of them on well, that one. I, I haven't been appointed tonight because we didn't do those appointments. And oh, I'm you're not, not even be, you know, I, oh, I, I indicated I a willingness okay, to be so reappointed. Cat is an appointment. <laughs> Got it. I, see. I understand. So you won't, right. I get not it. off the hook because we are meeting on June 28th before. I understand. But, and there are two vacancies on possibly three vacancies actually um, on the housing trust. Okay. And the first one that I think should be filled.
I run and stay on the next time, they could drop back up. They could also be the representative to the. Well, I think you're bringing too much in right now. We should just focus on what we. I'm just trying to let people know what the, uh, yeah. the, okay. the scope, the extent of the I job. Know, we'll never, it's 922. So. We're going back to appointments. Yeah. Right. 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 So I'm just looking through it. So Kate is on the Affordable Housing Trust. Yes. Um, give me a second as I go through this. I. Uh, well, I was on a municipal. Let me just go through this list. Let, let, and, let him go through his list. Um, Kate is on Community Preservation Commission. We just appointed her last the end of June. My appointment. But you're on now. That's an appointment, yeah. right? Yeah. So we have an appointed position on that role on that committee. Yes. Right. Municipal facilities is an appointment. It isn't strictly. Um, I think it would be good for us to have one well, person. According to this list, it, you're appointed for a three-year term, but it expires this year. Yeah. Um, so you're listing the things that are appointments. I'm I'm listing. I'm looking at what we were just looking at. Yeah. That, those appointments. Yeah. Had we just I'm accepted not, that slate, yeah. this is what would have happened. Yeah. Yeah, but but I think there's a difference still between housing trust and CPC, which is which are statutorily appointed. Um, there's no. I mean, I happen to also be on the MSC, but it's not because I was on the. No, but I think I think you're which is represented right. Exactly. Right. Okay. But if there's, I don't think and there's the same thing with insurance advisory yeah. committee. You yeah. have a select board representative. Right. Nathan's point is correct. It's when you're an appointed member, however you got there, you got to show up for the meetings. Right. Okay. Uh, River River Stewardship Council. I am the appointed representative. Okay. That's a separate issue. On. No, that's just that's another. I thought might um, not be. I thought we no longer had anybody on that. I, I am on it. I've never heard from them, but I agreed to be on it. <laughs> oh, because um, they had reached out. River well, Street. That's a side conversation. Okay. Traffic Safety Advisory Commission. We have a TBD for the select board rep. That's because nobody expressed a preference for it. And. That's an appointed. It's an appointed, according to this list. Okay. And that that just going through this quickly. That's what I'm, I'm yeah. seeing. Okay. So if you're in on those, you're an appointed. You're not a liaison. Okay. We should pull those out in the list and put it in a separate category. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Because that also is a much greater. Well, time I guess commitment. I still feel that the MFC could get by with just a liaison and not an appointed member because so we just need to change the charter mm -hmm. right now the charter is, is, is it? yes i wrote it oh you wrote okay all right i i didn't remember that sorry oh you're your map c appointed as well Kate. you're appointed to most of them i'm uh, Wait, what was the last one you said oh mapc which isn't even listed yeah, there's on only here. one appointment that is what not is mapc Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Oh, okay. Okay, I didn't yeah, well, that one. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Busy. Well, I want to give up MFC. <laughs> so you'd so you'd like yeah. Okay. Which is fine. Um yeah, I you've made that clear here in terms of your choices. Yeah. So yeah, Travis. Just wondering there's one and this is what about like sections? Or... No, do they have a liaison? Is what he's asking. Yeah. Well, we have other elected boards like the Planning Board and Board of Health, and they we do, do have, have a liaison, liaison yeah. right? But uh, we have never liaised with the set assessors that I'm we should. aware of. So every every board and committee should have a. Yeah. It's Maybe just somebody to call if they have questions. What was that about him and Brian again? <laughs> Yeah, well, a good point, Travis. Now, I don't think we really have an ag committee anymore. So that could be, you know, now the assessor. Is it is it really a completely gone now? Well, there's no more group, but it you could I, I don't know if there's still interest in I mean the master plan talks about reinvigorate reinvigorating the ag committee. Um Okay. All right. So we have to 
So we should leave that. Yeah. I just wanted to also clarify one thing on the working groups and task force. I am not currently on high end. Oh, you're not. That was Luke's. Oh, okay. Right, so that's Very open. Good. Island. All right. Before, if I was, I did not know. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. And Luke thought Luke. he was, because I know he was going to meet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so with that clarification, um, I'm going to try to knock some off. Yeah, we see. see if we can, yeah, get through some of this at least. Sure. Um, so let's go back to the first group, the town departments. Um, if people are comfortable with the idea of sort of divvying, dividing these uh, among the board members. Um, Nathan, you're down for communications. David, you're down for the COA. And then the three... Uh, DPW, fire and police. I mean, to Travis, Kate, and Nathan, do you do you want to just indicate a, a sort of a first choice and see where we come out? Um, I'll stick with what I have. But you've got your name on everything here. No, now. So, DPW. DPW is what you say. Oh, whoa, whoa. You'll stick with DPW. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Travis, All what right. would you like? Why don't you take fire? What would you like? Why don't you take fire? <laughs> no, well, <laughs> just, I was just thinking uh, that. Uh, I think a new person getting fire would be a good thing. A new person getting fire would be good. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think that you'll find I that. I yeah. yeah. Engage okay. my brain. So that and means I'll, we have um, an occupation with DPW. Yeah. Uh, Travis with fire and Kate with police. And, and that's yeah. a continuation for Kate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Then um I mean, should we go should we go, go the, to the ones that are in bold to try to I would just those out? rattle down the list. Thank yeah. You. Okay. So housing trust, you're gonna stay as the appointed. Appointed. We'll clean up the list for the, well, with the select board. There's up to two that could be appointed, and I would like to invite somebody else okay, to come so on. Okay, so question it. mark whether we have a second member. Okay. 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 And then um, ag. So the rest, of, so Nathan, you're down for agriculture. I'm fine. Uh, board of Appeals is Travis. Uh, Gee, David why. for Board of Health. And then we have the Carlisle Public School as well as CCHS. Um, I, I, I'm happy to yield to Travis on CPS if you would like it. Um, I don't know the yeah, yeah. Again, it's, I mean, they meet, they don't actually meet here that often. The, uh, the CCHS, I mean, do you want to be on both, I guess, or do you prefer one over the other? Do you care? Or not? Looks at this is what would I be interested in? Yeah. I, I don't feel like rushing that volunteer for everything. I don't want to do that. So, um, but I, I, I think we should do the uh, CPS down. We'll take CPS then. We'll give you CPS. As a process, if I may, maybe what we should do is just go through this and say what we're interested in and then yeah. add them all up and make sure that nobody has too big a load or has too disproportionate. Yeah, and you know, fine. either we do that today or Steve does it or Jen does it. I'm keeping a list right now. I'm, I'm doing it right now in I, real time. I so. think that's I, thought, I mean, what we have is already the I understood this was. That's already there. Yeah. The this is what people are interested in. What people submitted. Okay. So, um so but let's go back then. We're saying that uh CPS Travis, Travis would be yes, and then David, are you talking saying you'll take CCHS? No. Oh, let's leave it Travis to the side. Let's both. well let's rebalance. Well, we're not setting in stone, but we're trying to get. Let 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 Travis finish, David. So, okay, all right. So this is so that's still um, discussable. <laughs> that's yeah. still under discussion. Okay, then uh, Conscom. Uh, Travis, the only Travis, one that's signed up. So that. well, I signed up. Yeah, I was open. And right. Is that a heavy lift or not? Okay. Yeah. 
I just don't understand the role of this. Are you yeah. Meeting? No, you do not. Unless you're appointed, you do not attend any okay. meeting. Great. Well, you just kind of I mean, generally know what's going on. But I will say the expect. I, well, this may be something that we we all need to discuss yeah. further. Is sort of the the role of the liaison. I think that um, it's a that. In my time on the board, people have take, acted on that responsibility in different ways. And so some folks have been more involved and others have been less involved. And maybe we just need to have a discussion about what that means, um, because I guess in my own view, I think it's important to occasionally go to meetings. Uh, and not just have it be that, well, only if something comes up, do they reach out to you? Right. Again, just because I think you, unless you have some sort of a relationship, so, so, then it's more difficult for yeah. that chair or somebody else on the committee to feel comfortable to reach out to you, you know? So you have that's to, right. not always the way we... Well, I just give you the way I do it, okay? So I, I try to make sure that, first of all, I reach out to the chair and I reach out to whoever's the administrator, if there is one and make sure that I am copied on all agendas. I'm invited to every meeting and I'm given an agenda and a packet. So at least I can look and see if there's something I want to attend. And then off cycle or, you know, apart from the meetings, not, you know, like with, with uh, Joan, I try to see her every month, just sit with her for a few minutes, see what's going on. Not necessarily with everybody else, but just develop that personal one-on-one -on -one so that to Barney's point, they're comfortable. So you want to have a look in and what they're doing. So you decide when you want to get involved and you want that trust so that they'll reach out to you. And then it depends on what issues are there, right? So um, I think, again, in my, just completely not arbitrary, but my own establishing major minor in this, doing this, it was more which boards and committees and stuff have more stuff that tends to involve like so it would need to involve select board like board of health has a lot of issues and as you know there's a policy stuff we should be involved we shouldn't be like siloed whereas conscom you know mostly the guy wants to put a shed on his thing i mean that's not necessarily us unless it gets escalated that that was kind of the rationale well, i i also i get agendas and minutes Right. I think that's pretty much standard policy, but maybe it's important to make sure all the boards. Well, we should add that to our onboarding list there. That we have. Um, historic commission. Do I think we're comfortable okay. saying yeah. that? Okay. Uh, we took the personnel off because we really don't have a committee, but when hopefully when we have a somebody in in house on staff they may decide they want to have some kind of a board and we can deal with it then. Planning board. If Travis finds that he's on too many things, I'm happy to stay on planning board. Yeah. Who, who am I writing down on my list? Travis. You put me last. Travis on planning board, okay. Uh, library. Do you, um, want, are you comfortable staying with that, Nathan? Okay. Um, actually, uh, um, would you mind if I took that one? The, um, we got a letter. It was kind of weird, but they actually requested to be their liaison. Didn't, it didn't come through. I, I haven't seen that, but maybe. Thank you. I'm fine if you're on it. Um, I've been on their visioning and on their um, so you're going, it, you're taking it? The design. So if you wouldn't mind, I, I would take that. And I actually go to there. Oh, okay. And the master planning implementation, I mean, we don't really have it yet. Well, that's new. Yeah, we yeah. haven't really decided let's how we're going to hold on that. On yeah. that. So let's, yeah, we'll, we'll hold, hold off that. on that. Yeah. Recreation Commission. Yeah, I'm, I'm mildly interested in it. I'm happy to take it. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, oh, if it, there's the audit. Uh, that's a, oh no, that's sorry, that's audit. That's a audit. different audit. Yeah, I was thinking, <laughs> getting mixed up. Yeah, and okay. if if it appears things are, too, you know, too much, David, on your list, um, that's something I would be interested in doing too. Okay. Um, see how it plays out. Uh, 
So then the Conservation Restriction Advisory Committee. So they really fall under, you know, CONSCOM. Yeah. So do we even need a liaison for that? Well, they're a separate entity, I guess. So okay. Uh, CPC. Um, That's an appointment. Yeah. And so we're going to hold those, right? CPC okay. is a hold, we said. Okay. All right. And then LEPC. So that's the um, Emergency Planning Committee, which really isn't meeting, uh, but I'm de I'm happy to. Is that a rep? Is that a liaison or an appointment? It is a, a, a liaison. Wasn't it? No, it's an appointment. Appointment. Okay. So I'll put you down at LEPC. Okay. okay. You have to go to those meetings. Okay. Yeah. All right. FinCom, I, I would like to continue there if, if that's fine with everyone else. So here's insurance advisory, Kate, you put yourself on well, there. Well, you know, uh, we've had so far zero meetings, but well, I'm that's hoping- That's another appointment. It hold should, on. yeah, it's an appointment. Hold off on that one. No, all right. You want to hold it? It's, I think it's important that we sort of resuscitate that. It yeah. seems like we're, yeah. we're a little okay. delinquent. And then land yeah. stewardship, uh, Travis, you're, again, that all falls in the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then um, traffic and, wait a minute, I skipped MFC. MFC. Appointment. That's appointed. Traffic and pedestrian safety is appointed. What are we so, doing with MFC? Did we just well, it's it's appointed? It's so appointed. we're going to hold off on that. Okay. All right. And then friends at Center Park. Um, oh, wait a minute. Did I skip? Says, so traffic and pedestrian, is anybody oh, jumping on that? Well, that's an appointment. That's an appointed. So we're going to hold oh, off on that. All right. And then, yeah, I'm happy to continue as the liaison to the CP. friends at Center Park. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. and then we put, we added MAPC, but that's appointed. So we're going to hold, hold off on, on that. that. Oh, and then, uh, we have the ARPA committee. That's also appointed. I actually do that. None of those are on that other list is appointed. So we'll have to update okay. that other list. Yeah. Well, I so, think also as an aside, we ought to develop some consistency around the nomenclature of working groups, task forces. Commissions. commissions, committees, boards. And, yeah. But anyway, for the moment, so, so we're at Highland. Definitely going to hold every appointment for now, yeah. including things that can, all right. That's what we said we were going to do. Okay. Right. Uh, and then Highland is open, which is um, also an appointment, right? Or not? We've overcomplicated. It wasn't on that other, but Highland wasn't on that other list, so I don't know. Let's just cons to take him off Highland and yeah, and uh, traffic pedestrian safety. Yeah. Well, let's let's. Uh, I'm just trying well, to remember. This, well, I mean, one difference is when you're appointed, you know, you're a voting member. When you're a liaison, you're not a voting member. Um, I think he was appointed. Right. He was appointed he was a voting as well. Member. Okay. So, the, but you can only be appointed. As a select board person, or we can yeah. appoint anybody we want. No, we can appoint anybody we want. Okay, so we could appoint we him. Could appoint him. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's, it's our appointment. It's yes, not right. necessarily I'm, our member. But then, right. question then, Nathan. So let's say we appoint Luke. Does that mean we need a liaison to keep him to be? Yeah. Yeah. We still need a liaison because he's not in anymore, right? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Public safety. Um, we have the two of you. Is that an appointment or a liaison? That's an away, the liaison. That's a liaison. That's a liaison. Oh, good. That's so we can do liaison. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nathan Travis has a lot of stuff. I think yeah. uh, I recommend Nathan take it. You okay with that, Nathan? All right. Then transfer station. Yeah, I'm happy to continue. You're taking with that. transfer station, right? Do you, I put it as a minor, but is it a lot of work? It should be considered a major. Uh, I go to the meetings because I want to and because I think it's helpful. Okay. But uh, no, I I don't consider that a heavy load. Okay. All right. Partly because it's a really good yeah. committee. Um, governance. I, I'd like to. to well, let me. So we haven't. Uh, so this, you know, this is going to be. Um, this will be a a change from. Or we didn't have a liaison right. from the select board to governance. And then I guess we're waiting on Wayne and I guess Rebecca to re to figure out who's going to be appointed to continue. 
Right. But, right. but so, we have the right to have a liaison. Yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. We Well, we, that's what we didn't do last time. Right. But we could have and we should have. We right. should, right, make that a part I don't think of you need to write in the charter that there will be a select board liaison. You no, just no, do but it. I don't. I don't think they ever even had a charter, frankly. No, we gave them a charter, and the problem was it was silent on some important uh, things. Okay. I blame myself for not uh, doing it. All right. So, anyway, Kate, you're, um, you got it. once that gets reconfigured, you'll liaison. be the liaison. Yeah. Okay. Um, energy and sustainability. Now, again, that's a, been a committee that's, um, you know, its first life it had its first, its first life is over. But the master plan wants to reinvigorate that, which I think will happen. And I would be interested in being the liaison to that group. That's a personal interest of mine. So you want to put me down. Um, Energy you're taking that, but it's yeah. not a thing yet, is it? No, it's not well, we don't have it yet, but right. same thing with um, okay. Energy. Okay. the other one up here. I forgot which one it was. Oh, Ag, the Ag Committee, right? It needs to be rebuilt. Um, then regionalization. So we don't, we haven't really established a group, but yeah, we are. So we hold it, yeah. So, and then IT. Um, so Nathan, you'll continue on that working group. Mm -hmm. Great. And then board of assessors, we're adding. Um, somebody have an interest in being the liaison to the board of assessors? We'll do that down the line. Uh, yeah. So we'll put you down for now. Let's. Yep. And then add them up. Yeah. So, um, do we want to pause now? It's uh, nine forty-four. Yeah. We have. Um, we should do. Uh, well, can I? I'll give you the score. If energy. You, okay. And then we can. So I mean, if we have the energy, we could spend a few minutes discussing the orientation for volunteer boards and committees, uh, and uh, then if there are any liaison reports. And we've covered everything else. Um, so we could shoot to still end, we could shoot to end at 10. Yep. Okay, so what I have is, um, um, so I'm going to lump the appointments, just major minor. So Kate, call them majors, housing trust police. That's two majors and library governance, two minors. And then you have a whole pile of things that you'll probably end up getting that we put a hold on. Barney, um, majors, just FinCom, minor would be LEPC, Central Park, ta uh, Transfer Station and Energy, one, two, three, four, one major, four minors, but you should have a lighter load anyway. As the chair, yep. Um, and you, you said you might want audit, which would be another light one. Travis, <laughs> so fire schools and planning as the majors, that's three. And then CONSCOM, CRA, Land Stewardship, and Assessors is for us. Actually, not too bad so far. Nathan, DPW, Public Safety, and IT is the majors, then the M3. Communications, Ag, Historical on the minors. Oh, and River Stewardship, is that really a thing? It's really a thing, but okay, so I'll put four. Okay, zero work because and then they reach out to me. For nobody reached out to me. Three and four, and then for me, health is the only major now. Council on Aging, Recom, Audit, three, and then we didn't actually decide CCHS. So um, and then a bunch of others. so it's actually pretty balanced right now. It's not nothing. Nothing's too excessive. There's just lots of TBDs. <laughs> there's a lot. Of, well, there's a few yeah. TBDs. The TBDs are some, some of them are significant. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important. But it's not a bad first cut. So yeah. I suggest um, let's clean it up with Jen. We need a better list. We need to clarify what's appointment and, you know, what's a yeah. nod and blah, blah, blah. We'll kind of take one more look at it. People can think about what people need to, we'll send it out. What people need to think about are, those appointments we talked about, CPC, MFC, Insurance Advisory, Traffic Advisory, MAPC, ARPA. Highland. Highland, right. So assessors, did I put that in? You took assessors, so that goes up. Board of Appeals? Do we have a Board of Appeals? No, we don't. I, I, he took it, put himself. He took a CBA, that's the third oh, one down. Oh, okay. So it is there, I missed it. So that would be Appeals. So actually now you've got five. You're kind of full. I think you're sort of full. 
You're full. So CCHS, maybe I'll I'll just take it then, because I don't have as many. I'm the one with slightest <laughs> Well, yeah, but you won't be in regionalization. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. I'm ducking a bunch of them. No, but you, well, anyway. Okay, so that's that's a good start. Let me just say a few minutes about the orientation, just to kind of people can think about it. We're not going to solve it all right now, but it, I think while Barney was away, there were some uh, back and forth about youth commission, and we're going to hear from the youth commission next time. I don't want to get into all the details, but I think. Uh, it highlighted something that we've been, some of us have been talking about, which is, again, in the many things we maybe don't do that great a job at, I don't think we prepare, especially new members and new chairs, but really committees and boards and that generally in terms of expectations. I mean, Nathan brought up one today, like, you know, everybody should have a liaison. And then we talked about, well, what's the duty of the liaison? We don't really understand definitionally which boards are which. So um, I did have a conversation with a couple people, including um, uh, what's his name? Um, brain is fried. Uh, Wayne Davis, who also volunteered. But w like when I was on school committee, you went to school committee school. Like it was a day session that the Massachusetts Association of School Committees puts out, and that they're probably best practices that we haven't looked at, but. Uh, even among ourselves, I think we could, and we I've done this before, make a binder, a virtual binder that has some basic things in it. So I think Kate and I brainstormed a little, and I just put together this list, and maybe it's too many things, but these are the kind of things that, you know, it doesn't have to be a big deal, but maybe there's a paragraph about that, right? Like, you know, OML training, obviously, we should have the attorney, you know, we should have one of the attorneys every year. People should be briefed on that. But just basic things about posting meeting notices, taking minutes, when do you vote on things, when do you don't vote on things. There's not that much guidance. And, and a number of us have been in boards and committees for a lot of years. And I think for me personally, I take for granted a certain level of knowledge that I don't think is there with everybody. So, you know, we say, well, gee, they haven't met in three years. They haven't taken minutes in, you know, who knows when. Well really we should refresh so so that's the origin of it and i do believe we should maybe make a little task force from ourselves to kind of put together some that. materials even if it's not complete and start getting it out there to the to the new people we should try to endeavor to do that like this summer i believe yeah, yeah. that's my pitch one thing i would suggest that i know i know some communities do have handbooks for board members so you know to begin to you know, assemble one. Thievery is a form of flattery, right? So we could yeah, we try should. to collect yeah. some of those. We should do, yeah. Right. I feel like you should be inventing the right. wheel. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah, we and should. And I believe we actually have one in our file somewhere too that we have. Yeah, that Jen came up with when she was cleaning out. Well, we should start with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also think, um, I think this is a great start um, and I think it will really be worthwhile. And I, I, I wonder if we can even just start this summer with setting up, maybe it's two different options for people to come to a session, anybody, anybody that's the chair and any new members and do even just something preliminary like orientation, right, on open meeting law and some of the basic yeah. things that have been defined here and, and put that out there as part of the expectation of serving on a committee. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to help organize that. Sounds like you can do so. Yeah. Any comments from anyone else? No, I think it's worthwhile work to do. All right. Then, uh, Unless I'm so, does anyone have um, a liaison report they want to offer? We have a couple of minutes for ten. Um, you gave mine. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, did were you um? Are you able to tell us a little bit about the public safety? No, as I replied to you, but I, oh, I didn't. Not, sorry, I didn't see the reply. Okay. I was not at the meetings. Okay. I I just saw something from the. 
public safety facilities task force that they are um, working out a contract with Stu Roberts to do, uh, what would you call it? I program guess. Program review. Pardon? Program, program review. review. Program review, yeah, um, of, of needs, including um, possible costs. Okay. So speaking of needs and costs, um, I will report from the schools. They've, you know, they've hired now a new facilities manager. He's apparently quite good, um, but he's uncovering a lot of things that need fixing. So they they have um, a number of fixits, not no single one of which is for un, over ten thousand, is my understanding. But and I think at the moment they feel like they can make it work with their budget, but. There may be some things, one of which is a generator they may have to replace. Then separately, they may, and we don't know yet for sure, they may have a very expensive residential placement that they cannot afford. And so I have sort of pushed them over to FinCom to uh, begin that discussion if that turns out to be the, mm -hmm. what they need. Okay. Um, oh, there was something else, but go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say ARPA, um, we, we're going to see anyway, yeah. but uh, kind of apropos though of what you were saying about their um, facilities manager, is he came up with a new way to air condition Wilkins mm -hmm. that will save about six hundred thousand oh, dollars. Wow! Uh, so there's some. <laughs> no, he's pretty good. I think. I think that's yeah. people are impressed with him. Instead of doing all these big idea. ducts and everything, right. he's going to do micro splits and mini, you know mini splits and yeah. Uh, do the same job and at a quarter of the cost. Um, yeah, let me, on, on Board of Health, and I I did have a conversation with Tony and um, a couple of things. So one, and we'll talk about it in the context of ARPA is the idea of whether antigen tests are equivalent to PCRs and their accuracy. We can have that discussion next time, um, but that's what the Board of Health feel that, that it is. Um, Touching on a couple other things for our long-term thoughts, the mosquito policy thing that kind of sort of buzzed by us. There was this thing about, I probably garbled the facts, but there's a statewide kind of mosquito okay. thing. And if you don't have a plan, if you don't have, it's sort of like 40B. Sorry, if you don't have a plan, you're subject to their plan. So if the, if the state says it's time to spray and you don't have a plan, you spray. So, but creating a plan is a big lift, apparently. So we are going to discuss at some point with the Board of Health, kind of just record keeping, I think, kind of get, not do a full blown plan, but figure out some approach where we have some data. And I'm not clear on where that goes, but that's one thing. Separately, I think with CONSCOM, there's a need for a beaver management plan. And somehow we're going to be involved. So my friend, Mr. Snell will, I'm sure be right in the middle of that. I don't have any more information on that, but that's like burbling around between Board of Health and uh, uh, CONSCOM. Right, because I thought a couple of meetings ago, we thought we might be getting a request to establish a beaver. Yeah, oh yeah, I think we- uh, You think yeah, that may be coming? that down, beaver management. Well, but- CONSCOM has a request. You think it will be coming still? Okay. I guess the question is, um, you know, does it have to be our committee or could it be a subcommittee for them? Um, or I mean, or is it, does it, is it ours because it affects Board of Health as well? I don't know. But again, some of these committees should be just like pro tem and they should belong to those, I think. Yeah. But we, we need to discuss this, you know. Right. I mean, I don't want to control a beaver study. I was going to nominate you, Katie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Any other reports? All right, then, uh, unless someone has something else that- Should report the warrants. We didn't, we tabled them because we didn't vote on them. Do we have to report out on the warrants? No, they're just, no, like, they're just there for information. Okay. And, um, and we had minutes from the uh, audit. That's right. So we should- or Did we vote them? Oh, we voted. Oh, never mind, never mind. Okay, all right, good. Yeah, I think so. I think we covered everything we need to cover. Okay. All right, good. Uh, thank you all for- um, Kind of enduring, harrowing at yeah. the beginning, <laughs> and we'll we'll. Uh, well now we have to nine. No, we need to uh, get some things updated. Anyway, thank you to those that have uh, 
stayed with us on the virtually and um, hope everybody has a good rest of their evening and uh, yes, we, have we will be back uh, a week from Thursday. All right. Uh, yeah. We have a motion to adjourn, please. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We have adjourned. Yeah.